Welcome, everyone. Thanks for tuning in with us this morning. Today, Pastor Aaron will be finishing up his series on Attitude is Everything. We would love, if you're watching us live, to leave some comments below so we can interact with you and make sure you share it with someone. So now get your notes ready, your hearts open, and let's worship together. Well, good morning, church. We're so excited to worship with you today, and we can't wait till we're back together again, but we just are excited for the honor to worship with you in your homes today. So let's just lift our hands. Let's just sing this out together.
God, and what we sang is true. We want to see you move like never before, God. Our hearts are open to it. God, open our eyes to be able to see it, that your presence is with us and you are moving. And we just thank you, Lord, that you will never leave us, never forsake us. We thank you for your presence, Lord. Hope you're all ready to give this morning. I know you're excited because you're such an awesome, generous church. So as you give this morning, there are several different ways. You can go to our website, you can do it on our app, or you can text LPCWV to 77977. And also you can mail it in or drop it by the church office anytime during the week. We know that God loves a cheerful giver and you all are such great, cheerful givers. So do it with such an expectancy and a heart of loving Jesus and being obedient to what the word says. And we're so grateful that we have the opportunity to partner up with our Father to be able to give and change people's lives. And the Bible says that God will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that we're going to have a hard time controlling if we do two things, tithing, as you mentioned, and offerings. And we have an awesome opportunity that many of you have pledged to. And uh, maybe if you haven't made a a pledge yet, we encourage you to do so. And that's toward our our MOVE project, which we're getting ready to move locations here in the next couple months. And so your giving toward that, first of all, we believe is going to help us um, finish out our auditorium, new sound, and make some um, renovations in the building. Um, It's going to help us get a new sign up. And then eventually, as we sell the building, add this whole addition on for office space and for a a kid's area. So So um, we believe that if you'll participate and help God and help us do that and take care of God's business, he's going to do a special blessing in your life. And we've already had reports of that. And so I would encourage you on that. Even though it's a season of a lot of uncertainty, I believe you stay firm in that, stay in faith in that, that, that God will really come through on your behalf and he would amaze you and do some, some, some really awesome, awesome things for you. And you can give the same way toward the MOVE project as you do the regular offering right. that's online on our app by texting to give. Um, also by, by mailing that in. And so we're, we're believing um, God's got some good things here in store. And also just wanted to tell you to watch your emails because you are you will probably already started getting opportunities to come and help us uh, move some stuff real soon we're going to start some demo and building some stuff so but we are going to abide by the 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 10 number that the government has given us and so we're going to work around all of that and um, do some different teams and things so we we appreciate just watch for that but i want to speak a blessing over your giving this morning and we're going to transition to our our message and some more worship this morning but i decree and i i I say over you that you are a generous a generous giver, a generous believer. I decree over you that you are blessed. And as you give, I declare that it has a hundredfold return in your life. You'll be so blessed. As Malachi says, you're going to have a hard time containing it. It's going to overflow in your life. And I speak protection during this season over your finances. The Bible talks about that too. He will protect our resources because we're tithers and we're givers. And I declare the word of God to be true in your life. Um, as your pastor, we, as your pastors, we speak that over you. Looking for some great reports. Wait, uh, can't wait to see you guys again. We're so excited also, not just to give, but about our move that's coming up here in just, oh, just a few weeks. God bless you guys. Thank you for being so generous and faithful givers. Well, welcome everybody. We are actually in the final week of our series, Attitude is Everything. And here's what we've been talking about, the fact that you and I need to always consistently be adjusting and developing the right attitudes, cultivating the right attitudes in our life. And the reason why I use the title, Attitude is Everything for our series, is because here's what attitude means. Attitude means your disposition, your inclination, your tendency. It's your mood. It's your vibe. So attitude is just our, uh, it's our disposition. And so attitude is so important because it determines what we believe, our perspective, our outlook, our motivations, um, our opportunities, really our perspective and outlook is, it comes right out of our attitude. So it's important because it determines what's going to happen in us, what's happening for us, what's happening through us. And so it's so important for us to develop the right attitudes. And the Bible actually tells us some attitudes that you and I should be cultivating, Usually when the Bible talks about attitude, it, it's, it uses the word spirit. Not with a capital S, that's the Holy Spirit, but a lowercase s, the spirit of faith or the spirit of joy. And so we're talking about these attitudes that we need to cultivate 
in our lives that we are learning from the Bible. We picked a few out to do in this series. And so before we jump into this, let's take a moment, let's pause, let's pray that God would change us, rearrange us as we learned this morning. Father, we thank you for your word. I pray that it would um, uh, bring a fresh encouragement to us, a fresh inspiration to us. I pray we'd learn something new, we'd apply that to our lives, and we'd see life change happen. And God, we thank you so, so much for the, these moments to be um, broadcasting and coming into people's homes and coming across uh, their devices. And Father, I pray that you, you help me share this word as you want it in your mighty name. Amen. Well, once again, we do appreciate the fact that you are tuning in, and I know there's lots of things happening out there, and we believe that um, we're continuing to do what the Lord has told us, that we are being uh, full of faith, full of wisdom, and full of honor during this time. And so over the next few weeks, we'll continue to broadcast uh, uh, these messages, uh, our Sundays, to you, and get ready for the time that we finally get to gather together again. That's going to be awesome. And so attitude is really everything because it's our disposition. It just determines what happens in our life. There's a lot of things that can happen to you, just like what we're in right now. But what happens to you if we have the right attitude, it makes sure the right things happen, happen in us and happen through us and happen for us. And so we've learned this over the last few weeks. We're responsible to develop an attitude of faith by hearing the words of Jesus, declaring them, doing them. Then we learned that it's up to us to allow God to delete the attitude of fear from our life by recognizing that it's fear, resisting it, and relying on the love of God. And then Wednesday night with our first Wednesday, appreciate all the good feedback on that, but, but we learned that we can also determine uh, a spirit of joy or an attitude of joy in our life by considering that the situations we're up against pale in comparison to our salvation. Uh, the promises are bigger than the problems, and our outlook in life determines the outcome. And so we, we have to um, weigh those things in, in, in comparison to what the Word of God tells us. And so we're going to wrap up this series um, this morning and we're going to look at the last attitude that we need to develop. And I want to start in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. So kick back in your recliner, lean up to your desk, get your notes out. Here we go. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7 says this. Wisdom is the principal thing, or it's the utmost priority. It's what we need to continue to pursue. Wisdom's the principal thing. Therefore, if it's the principal thing, get wisdom. And while you're getting wisdom... Get understanding. Keep pursuing wisdom, understanding, or another word for understanding is revelation. And I want to talk in the last part of this series about how you and I can discern an attitude of wisdom. We can discern an attitude of wisdom. And, and I was thinking about this. I remember way back when I was younger, always praying, God, I just want to be wise. I want to have your wisdom. I, in other words, I want to navigate life from God's perspective. And I pray that's your prayer too. You know, Solomon was given the option of having anything and he chose wisdom. And God said, because you chose wisdom, you get everything else. And so I believe that wisdom is the gateway to all the other things in our life that we would desire. And so let's talk about how you and I discern an attitude of wisdom. And I want to start off, I want to read two prayers that Paul prayed, two sections of that, because Paul was praying that above everything, we actually would have wisdom. We would be a given wisdom. The word given means that we would be imparted with a spirit of wisdom. Let's look in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17. Paul said, I keep asking the God of our Lord Jesus, the glorious Father, that he would give you the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation so that you would know him better. Now the word spirit here, you could compare, uh, if you remember <clears throat> in school, you would have school spirit or team spirit. It, it's, it's a good fit for here that Paul's saying you would have this excitement about wisdom. You would have this um, spirit about wisdom. You would have this like school spirit or team spirit about wisdom and revelation. And so here's what Paul was praying. Paul was praying that first of all, I want you to have revelation. Here's what revelation is. Revelation means there's always been something there, but it had a lid on it or it had a curtain in front of it. It's always been there. It's not like it wasn't there, but it was always there. But you didn't know what it was until it was disclosed to you. It was revealed to you. It was open to you. The lid came off. The curtain came back. And you have what I call an aha moment. And it's, an, oh, I get it. Aha. I see. It's a wow moment where you realize that something so good was behind that curtain and you never knew it. <clears throat> you never knew that it existed. You may have not really understood it. That's what revelation is. Wisdom is the ability 
to apply that revelation to your life. And so this is what Paul is praying. Paul is praying this, that I pray that God would give you this sense of wisdom and revelation. Now let, let me take that a, a, a moment forward before we move on. Really what Paul was praying is this, when we talk about revelation and, 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 and wisdom, and you got to get this, this is so, so important and it's so, so good. What Paul was praying is this, everything that has happened in your spirit, man, Everything that has happened in the spirit, everything that has happened that is supernatural, that is in your spirit, your spirit man is made complete and perfect. God downloaded all of heaven, all of his spirit, all of his, 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 um, his, his wisdom into your spirit man. And Paul was praying this, that what has happened in the spirit man would manifest in the natural. What has happened in the supernatural would manifest in the natural. So what wisdom does is wisdom, or revelation tells you what's happened in your spirit and wisdom applies it to the natural. Wisdom takes it from the spirit on the inside and reveals it to the natural. Isn't that so cool? So for, for example, um, your, your spirit is connected to the healing power of God. Your spirit's connected to the fact that you're righteous, that you're forgiven, that, that you're a conqueror, that you, you're to prosper. All of that stuff is in your spirit, man. And so when you get revelation of it in your mind, it connects it to your spirit and wisdom lets you apply it to your life. That's what Paul was praying for. I want everything that has happened in the spirit, man, the revelation, I want it to come to fruition or manifestation in the natural. That's what revelation and wisdom does. That's why um, the writer of Proverbs told us this. In everything that you're getting, get revelation and get wisdom. In other words, let the lid come off of it and let wisdom apply it to your life. Now, he also prays a prayer in Colossians. And he says, for this reason, this is chapter 1, for this reason, verse 9 uh, the reason here, the verses before it are talking about how our faith produces fruit. So for this reason, since the day I heard about you, talking about the church in, in Colossae, he, we, we have not stopped praying for you. So Paul is praying again. And we keep asking God to fill you. One translation says to cram you full of the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives. So the Spirit's giving us revelation and wisdom. Verse 10, so Paul's saying, I want you to be crammed full of revelation and wisdom. Verse 10 says, says this, I want you to be crammed full of wisdom and revelation so you can walk, a, a, so that you may live a life, walk this life worthy of the Lord, that you please Him in every way, that you bring forth all of this good fruit, that you grow in knowing God, that you're strengthened with all power according to His glorious might, so you would have great endurance and you'd have great patience. And giving joyful thanks to the Father, He has qualified you to share in His inheritance uh, of all of His holy people in the kingdom of life. So Paul is praying that we would get revelation revelation, we would get wisdom, we'd have an attitude of revelation, we'd have an attitude of wisdom, and you'd be so crammed full of this that you'd know the will of God, it would affect how you walk, it would affect that you know God better, that it would affect your patience, it would affect your joy, and it would bring forth great fruit in your life. Paul's praying that above all things, we would have a spirit or an attitude of what? Wisdom and revelation. So I came up with these three things. I like to preach in points. I like to have three points, Father, Son, Holy Ghost points. And so here's, here's what I believe to help you out to make this practical. How would you and I continue to discern spirit of wisdom in our life? Here's these three things. If you practice these three things or you develop this mindset on these three things, it's really going to help you. Talking about um, discerning an attitude of wisdom. Because we need, why do we need wisdom? Because we need to make right decisions. You have to make choices every day about what you believe, how you feel, what you purchase, what you believe in, what you're adjust to, what you know, where you're going to stand on. The life is full of decisions. In, in running a, a ministry, I, I've told people this, uh, when, when I took over this ministry, if I knew the amount of decisions I was going to have to make, man, <laughs> it's eye-opening. Everything from um, paint collars to um, salaries to vision endeavors. So we need wisdom. We need wisdom. Here's how you continue to have a continuous flow of wisdom in your life to know the things of God 
So they translate into the natural for us. And so here's what, number one, if we're going to discern this attitude of wisdom, one, we consistently chase revelation. We consistently chase revelation. And we've kind of popped up this phrase a lot uh, when me and my wife are talking, and I, and I say this to our time, we're going to chase revelation. We're going to chase revelation. And so this is where it starts. We're going to, on a consistent basis, keep chasing revelation. What's revelation? Revelation is the word of God. It's the words of Jesus. It's something that was behind of curtain and we're going to pull the curtain back. We're going to pop the lid off of it. We're going to find out what God said about it. We're going to find out what Jesus revealed about it. We're going to discover what God downloaded in us and we're going to consistently chase revelation. These are the things that are going to keep you making right decisions at the right time, in the right place, with the right benefits. So the book of James says this, if you need wisdom, then what you and I need to do is we need to go to God and ask him for wisdom And the Bible says he's generous and he will give it to us. He won't even rebuke us for asking it. One of the things God wants you to ask him for is wisdom and revelation. Now, here's the deal. You can't just go and say, God, give me wisdom and revelation. You've got to go to the word of God. You've got to read the words of Jesus. And you've got to say, God, as I read this, let this come alive. Let me see revelation. Let me see something I haven't seen before. Let this change my thinking. Let this change the way I breathe. Let this change the way that I I decide things. And so James says, if you need it, go get it. Matthew says it this way, if you ask, you receive. If you seek, you find. And if you knock, it's going to be disclosed to you. So it's this attitude that we need to have about looking and seeking and knocking and finding out revelation. And, and, and in our lives, to, to chase revelation means this, we need to, on a continuous basis, we need to be teachable. We need to be correctable. Here's the cool thing, we should chase correction. God doesn't correct you by smashing your car into a pole, giving you a flat tire, or putting disease on you. God corrects us with the word. We should want to be corrected. Why? What does correction mean? To get back into alignment, to get back into blessing, to get back into alignment. You know, if your car starts to get out of an alignment, at first you don't notice, but it just starts drifting a little bit. The steering starts drifting. But after a while, it's so out of alignment that you can't keep it in the right path. And our lives can get that way. Our thinking can get that way. We need to stay teachable. We need to stay correctable. We, we need to come in on a Sunday morning with our notepad and a pen, ready, pastor, and give me some revelation. We need to, if we're going to log on to a podcast, we need to log on and say, I'm going to find a right speaker talking about faith stuff, and I'm going to get some revelation. Because here, you cannot believe for something you don't have revelation for. If you have some ignorance in an area, you can't have faith for it. So you need revelation. And there's some things in our life we got to keep hearing and hearing and hearing and keep revelation on things like healing, things like prospering, things like the favor of God, things like the grace of God, things on the Holy Spirit. We need to keep hearing these things about the Word of God. Why? It puts revelation in us. My job every Sunday that I get up is not to make you feel good, it's to give you revelation. I'm going to chase revelation and give you. You need to come with an attitude of of, um, wanting revelation. And I love these talks that me and my wife have all the time. We'll be like, oh, guess what this word said? Guess what the Bible means here? Guess what I heard in this message? Because you need someone you can discuss revelation with. What to do? It's stirs you. If you're living on yesterday's revelation, you're a day behind. If you're living on last year's revelation, you're a year behind. And it's not like God's breathing something new or he wrote something new. It's just revelation that we didn't have before. And I want to keep pulling the curtain back. I want to keep taking the lid off of things for you. So you have a great, just think about so many of you said, I've came to life point and I didn't know about grace. And I came to life point. I didn't know anything about the favor of God. I didn't know that I was righteous. I didn't know it, what, what tithing meant. I didn't know what, what, what the power of the Holy Spirit. I didn't know these things. We were, you were in a place of ignorance. And I've said this, the devil wants to keep you in darkness and ignorance. Because if he does, he has you on his home field advantage. But when you bring it into the light and you get revelation on it, everything starts to change. So I want to encourage you, let your attitude be that you're going to keep chasing revelation because you might hear something on a Sunday, then you might have heard it and you have an aha moment, a wow moment, and you keep hearing it. Now your faith is stirred. You can put your faith on something. See, you might, may have come from a religious setting where they told you that you get extra stars for being broke. 
then all of a sudden you started hearing us take the word of God and taking scriptures, not out of context, but keeping them in content. And you started learning that God says, above all things, I want you to prosper. That the word says, I want you to have riches. That I want you to have the favor of God. You've been living by luck and you've been living by faith. And God says, you don't live that way. You live by the word of God. You live by the favor of God. And all of a sudden you're learning these things. Now you can have faith for him. And you start putting your faith out there. A spirit of faith, I start believing, I start speaking, I start responding that way. And all of a sudden, guess what starts happening in your life? You go from broke to abundance, and you go from poverty to prosperity, and you go from debt to freedom, or you go from sick to healed, or you go from depressed to joy, or you go from discouraged to encouraged. You go from um, bored to to, 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 to being enlightened by the things of God. You, you go from your relationships being hindered and bad decisions, and now all of a sudden you're making better decisions and your relationships are stronger. But why? Because the revelation of the word, but you got to keep chasing revelation. How many know that's good? Look at someone and say, that was good right there. Thank you. I don't know if you did that or not, but um, I wish I had a camera on you and I could see what you're doing right now. Hopefully, you're up in, in your living room. I'm just. This is how I picture y'all. Y'all are in your in your. You know, you're in your PJs right now, or maybe it's later, and you're you're up in your. You're right now. You're in your living room, and you're up. You you're doing this because you're excited. You're pumped because that message or that point was so awesome. Here's the second point. So we consistently chase revelation because it'll change your life. It'll let you live above the level you've been living on. Number two, then you accurately apply wisdom. You keep chasing the revelation, then you accurately apply wisdom. Another way of saying wisdom is discernment. It means you're able to distinguish things, recognize, and perceive things accurately. Here's what I've noticed, even in our church world, that a lot of us, even believers, we don't see issues clearly, and we're easily misled. We don't see issues clearly. And we are easily misled. That's why you need the word of God. And that's why you need, uh, you need pastors. You need men of God, women of God. They're going to bring you revelation. You're going to be able to take that revelation and apply wisdom to it. It's a spirit. This is an attitude. This is a disposition. I've got a mood of revelation. I've got a vibe of wisdom. I love what Brian Houston said. He said, don't try to be the loudest person in the room. Be the wisest. Ask God for wisdom. And wisdom is us being able to apply that to our lives. So when we accurately apply revelation to our lives, I want you to think about some things it does. First of all, it will always protect you from deception. It will always protect you from deception. It will always heal. It will heal you. It will make you whole. It will free you from bondage. And it's the catalyst for you to continue to have essential growth in your life. It's what wisdom does. Protects you, heals you, makes you whole, frees you from bondage. It's a catalyst to grow. Because what do you do? I'm knowing things. See, we say something wrong all the time. I don't know. Well, you just don't know. You can never know. Yeah, you can. The word of God can be your revelation. It can be your wisdom. Stop saying that kind of stuff. Start saying, I know what the word of God says. Even in the situation we're in right now, um, I, I told you this, this series was written before this, this virus threat ever came to us. And think about the things we've spoken on the last few weeks. You've gotten revelation on how to have faith, how to delete fear, and how to stay in joy. But I'm also telling you this morning that you can, you can stay in wisdom. You, you can know how to respond to these issues. See, when it first came out, my first thing that I told you, me and my wife stood on this stage, and we declared Psalm 91. And then what else did we say? We also declare to you wisdom. Be smart. That's why we're being responsible. We're coming to you via live stream. We're just trying to be wise about it. We're not in fear about it. We're being wise. And then we're being an honor. See, we have understood this issue clearly. Why? Because we're geniuses? No, because we know what the word of God says. And we know what revelation says. And then we're being responsible. Just This is our determination on this, to be responsible to keep you protected. That's what wisdom does. Wisdom... No one's ever been unprotected because of wisdom. But we've put our place in a place of unprotection because we've been foolish. Wisdom will free you from a bondage. Foolishness never does. Wisdom will bring wholeness in your life and growth. Foolishness never will. Now, uh, let me keep moving here. James chapter 3, a few verses, says there are actually two types of wisdom. There's false wisdom and there's true wisdom. And I want to explain the difference. James chapter 3, who is wise and who has revelation among you? 
So if we scanned the room, if we, if we scanned um, through the video cameras this morning, if, if, if I evaluated you and I asked this question, let's figure out who really has wisdom and revelation and who doesn't. The Bible says you're, you're able to tell by their life the deeds they've done, look what it says, in humility that comes from wisdom. I can tell if you're in wisdom by your humility, verse 14. But if you harbor bitterness, envy, selfish ambition in your hearts, when we know ambition's a spirit too. Actually, I heard Jimmy Evans say that all ambition can, become, can be evil. Um, but that's a whole different sermon. And you, you have ambition in your hearts, so don't boast about it. Don't deny the truth. That type of wisdom doesn't come from heaven. Look what it says. It's actually earthly. It's unspiritual. Look what it says. It's actually demonic. For where you have envy and you have this ambition, you have disorder and it, you end up with all evil practices. Verse 17, 17 says, but the wisdom that comes from heaven is pure, peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, full of good fruit. It's impartial and it's sincere. There's a difference between true wisdom and false wisdom. Here's what false wisdom is. False revelation is, is this. It, it's earthly, unspiritual, it's demonic. It always births division. Why? Because at the root of it, it's pride. At the root of false wisdom is a pridefulness, an ambitious spirit. And the Bible says that's not from heaven. But true wisdom, the Bible says this, it births humility. It creates a spirit of agreement. So here's how you know the difference. False wisdom, it's lower wisdom. It's earthly. It's unspiritual. It's actually from the devil. And it's from your pride. And it always creates division. And we read all those things. It's divisive, strifeful, confusing, brings disorder. But true wisdom is from above. It has a spirit of humility to it. And it always creates agreement. So let, let's, make, let's let that make sense in the light of what we're talking about. I heard Mike Murdoch say this. He said, every problem is a wisdom problem. Every problem is a wisdom problem. So we would say this. Every failure is a wisdom failure. So if it's real wisdom, it means there's a sense of agreement. So think about this. Real wisdom means we're getting into agreement with the Word of God. If we're in agreement with the Word of God, the Spirit of God, the consistency of Scripture, then guess what? We humble ourselves under that. That's what the Bible says. Humble yourselves under the Word. It always brings agreement. So it, we know that it's wisdom when it's agreeing with the, with the consistency of Scripture with the character of God, with the attribute of God, with the nature of God, with the purity of the word of God. We know that if, we, if we're making decisions and it's in agreement, but we have to be humble. When we're making relationship decisions, life decisions, conduct decisions, we need to humble ourselves with what God says, not what we think or even what we feel, but we always bring it under rank. That's what humility means. It's a military word. It means I get under the rank of the word of God. And if we have a humble spirit like that, if we have a humble demeanor like that, we're in agreement with the word. Even with other people, we, we do what? We get in agreement. That's what we're doing right now. We're getting in agreement with helping our president, with helping our governor, with helping our local officials. We're getting into agreement. That's God. That's wisdom. That's responsibility. That's revelation. Now think about the opposite. If I'm prideful, my decisions are going to be against the word of God. They're going to be about my opinions. They're going to be about my feelings, my ambitions. The Bible said that, that's earthly wisdom. And what does it do? It always brings division. In our relationships, those type of decisions bring division. If there's division happening, it's not wisdom. If there's agreement happening, it's wisdom. Hopefully that helps you this morning. And so that's how we apply wisdom to our lives. We get into agreement with the word instead of being in opposition to it. Now, the book of John says this, the spirit of truth will always reveal wisdom to us. That's the Holy Spirit. What does the Holy Spirit do? He's always taking the words that Jesus taught, because Jesus is the word, and he's reminding us of it, and he's highlighting it. And so if we're, if we're listening to the right preachers, and if we're in the word of God, what happens is the Holy Spirit brings the, that revelation to our lives and he tells us how to apply it to our lives. He tells us how to make a decision about who we're going to date, who, who we're going to spend time with, who our friends are going to be, the activities that we should or should not be doing, um, how to use our money, how to take care of our bodies, 
how to interact with people, how to make decisions about the virus, how to make decisions about life, purchases, all of these things, you can always make the right decision when wisdom is involved because the Holy Spirit takes the Word of God, brings it to your memory, brings it to your mind, brings it to a place where you can apply it. I hope I'm helping you so far. So discerning an attitude of wisdom means this. One, I keep chasing revelation consistently. Number two, I, I, I keep applying wisdom accurately. And here's the last one. Uh, and this is the best way I could word it. So, let, so here's what we're saying. An attitude or a, a discernment of wisdom, an attitude of wisdom means this. I'm always chasing revelation. I am always applying wisdom, chasing revelation, applying wisdom. And number three, I am always, or I would say it this way, I never have to apologize for the blessing it brings. I never have to apologize to the blessing that it brings. Let me read you a scripture from the book of Proverbs. Um, I think this will summarize what we said. So I'm saying, don't you ever, ever, ever apologize for the blessing that wisdom brings into your life. Wisdom will bring blessing into your life. It will bring the right answers and rewards to your life. So let's say this in Proverbs chapter 2, the first 11 verses. My child, will you treasure my wisdom? Then and only then will you acquire it. And only if you accept my advice and hide it within you will you succeed. So train your heart to listen when I speak. It's talking about wisdom. And open your spirit wide to expand your discernment. Pass it on to your sons. Pass it on to your daughters. Yes, cry out for comprehension and intercede for insight. This is talking about this just chasing this revelation, chasing wisdom. For if you keep asking and seeking like a man who would seek for silver, search in hidden places for cherished treasure, then you're going to discover the fear of the Lord and you're going to find what real true knowledge is of God. Wisdom is a gift from a generous God. Every word he speaks is full of revelation and it becomes a fountain of wisdom and understanding within you. Verse 7, for the Lord has hidden a storehouse of wisdom and he's made access, he has made it accessible to his godly lovers. He becomes your personal bodyguard as you follow his ways, protecting and guarding you as you choose what is right. Then you will discover all that is just, proper, and fair, and you will be empowered to make right decisions as you walk into your destiny. When wisdom wins your heart and revelation breaks in, true pleasure enters your soul. If you choose to follow good counsel, the divine design will watch over you and understanding will protect you from making poor decisions. Here's the biggest thing about an attitude of wisdom. It helps us make the right decisions. It helps us make the right choices. So we could say it this way. Every time I make a right choice, I'm showing the evidence of wisdom. Every time I'm making a right choice, I'm showing the evidence of wisdom. Every time I make a creative choice, I'm proving the expertise of wisdom. In other words, we're, we're, we're pursuing wisdom, so, so it's showing up in our decisions, it's making us creative, and then character choices show the efficiency of wisdom. So we're always having the right character choices, the creative choices, and the accurate choices. Let me put it this way. If you have wisdom, or if, if you have revelation and wisdom, wisdom's the application of wisdom, you're always going to have blessing. Why? Because you'll make a right decision. Now, here's what I believe it is possible that you make the right decision every time. Why? Because you have access to revelation. Now, I know that it's probably not likely, but we can. You can make the right decision. So here's how it goes. If I have the right revelation and I have the right wisdom, I get to make the right decision, and it brings the blessing of God. If I have wrong revelation and I can't apply, or I'm going to make a wrong decision, I'm going to have wrong consequences. I'm not going to have the blessing of God. So here's how we discern an attitude of wisdom. I keep chasing revelation. I keep chasing it. I keep applying accurately wisdom, and I don't apologize for the blessing. Here's how I know if you're living a life of wisdom. I see the blessing in your life. You can look at someone who has, and don't take offense to this, but you may have a mess financially in your life. That means there's been a lack of applying revelation and wisdom to your life. There's a, there's a blessing void on your finances. Or maybe I'm looking at some real relationship issues. Now, we all have relationship struggles, but I mean just bad rela history, bad relationship. What, I, what, I'm, what I could say is you're missing revelation and wisdom, and there's not a blessing on your relationships. We could say it in your health, relationships, your emotions, your feelings. But if we have the right revelation and wisdom, 
there's a blessing on those. I can look at people's life who have revelation and wisdom on finances and see the blessing on their life. I can see people, I can look at their marriages and I can see a blessing on their life because I see the wisdom and I see the revelation. Now, if you have some areas that you know, man, I, I need to have some better decisions, what do we do? Well, the Bible says you ask for revelation and wisdom. You chase it. You apply wisdom and don't apologize when God brings you up out of poverty. And don't apologize when God heals you. And don't apologize when God restores your relationships. And don't apologize when you come up out of depression. If your whole family never comes up out of it, if all your friendships never come up out of it, if everyone else stays broke around you, I'm not saying be prideful. I'm just saying don't apologize for the blessing that wisdom brings in your life. Actually, what it does is it attracts people to knowing how to know what you know. How to know what you know. How many got some good stuff out of this this morning? We've looked at this series about attitude, and attitude is absolutely everything. Just think that you could walk around with a vibe of wisdom, a tendency of revelation, a mood of wisdom and revelation, and it'll bring the blessing of God on your life. I want to close. I have this in my, in my um, day timer or my calendar book. At the end, I wrote down, it is a declaration for wisdom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to read it. I'm going to ask you to repeat it after me. Let's go. I declare the spirit of wisdom leads me, guides me, and teaches me all things. I am never at a loss to know, to determine, or to decide. Godly wisdom reveals God's word, God's will, and God's ways to me. It allows me to choose accurately every time. I confess I have perfect knowledge for every situation and every circumstance that I come up against. Every challenge is an opportunity for a wisdom solution. My mind is renewed. I have the mind of Christ. I will be rich in wisdom. It gives me insight. It gives me understanding and creativity. Wisdom makes me useful, makes me effective. It makes me essential. That's a great confession for you. I want to close by praying this morning for you. And I appreciate so much you tuning in. And I really, really hope that this helped you. I hope this series helped you. Now next week is Easter and we're going to start a brand new series. And here's my new series, Grace Is. I'm going to spend the month of April talking about what grace is. But wherever you're at right now, whatever um, uh, situation that's weighing on you, if you're in a good place or a rough place or a challenged place or you're just soaking it all in this morning, I pray, like Paul prayed, that there would be a spirit of wisdom, a spirit of revelation that would open the eyes of your understanding and it would overflow in your life. I pray, like Paul prayed, that you'd be so crammed full of wisdom and revelation that you would walk worthy in a way that pleases God that you would have strength in his power, you would have understanding, and I pray that it would bring such a blessing in your life that it would be obvious that you would, wouldn't have to apologize for it, but it would be the evidence of revelation and wisdom in your life. Amen, amen, and amen. Love you guys. Can't wait to see you. Keep turning in. Keep tuning in. Keep chasing. Re I mean, you need to be tuning in, chasing revelation. Chase it, chase it, chase it. God bless you guys. song we could ever sing, worthy of all the praise we could ever bring, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever be, we live for you.
every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus. Jesus, the name above. the only one who could ever see worthy of every breath we could ever bring we live for you oh we live for you holy there is no one like you there is none besides you
Hey, church, thank you guys so much for joining us today. We hope you had a great morning with us. And we want to encourage you, next week is Easter Sunday. We are so excited for Easter. We are going to have Easter online, but I want to encourage you, make sure you join us that, that morning and invite someone to watch with you. Don't watch by yourself, right? Invite someone who maybe has never been to church with you. Hey, this is a great opportunity to invite someone and say, hey, you can watch with us. Have a watch party. Text us. FaceTime them while you're watching. That way you guys can join together and have a great, great Easter. So we are so excited for next week. We will see you guys then. Have a great week.